Hi, everybody. My name is Richard L'Esperance, and I go by the name of my man, Richard. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, how to scale your business to the next level. And I have the pleasure to have Beate Chalette with me and uh, the growth architect. She is an entrepreneur and a book author, and she's going to give us some keys on uh, on how to scale our business to the next level in so, uh, Beate, please uh, tell everybody who you are. Tell uh, tell the people like uh, a little bit about uh, your story, and uh, we'll start from there. Yes, um, my man, Richard. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for having me. My name is Beate Schlett. I'm known as the Growth Architect. I work with visionaries and leaders and help them to grow their authority and scale their impact. And what that means that I'm the person that comes in when somebody needs a plan. And I help them to map out the plan and then build the systems and do all the stuff that you need to actually understand where you're going. What is that strategy to get there? What are the systems that you need to build? And then how do you build your authority as the expert in doing exactly that? Okay. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your journey because you were in debt and then you sold your business. So tell us the process of... Uh, of your journey and where you are today. Yeah, so the process was rough. I am originally from Germany so, and I live in Los Angeles, so I'm an immigrant and I was a single mom that had to figure out how to run a business with no previous business experience. From in Germany I was a photographer, I had a photography degree. I then realized I was better at the business side, became a photo editor, ended up at L magazine in Germany and had the dream job at 23 and didn't really enjoy myself very much. And then decided to immigrate, come to the United States, and then build up myself as an artist representative and as a still photography producer. So always in, these, in the realm of photography. And then I was laid off because there was a big recession and they, he couldn't afford to keep me on. And over the next 10 years, I went through what I call my decade of bad luck, fires, floods, riots, earthquake, lawsuit, September 11th, and finally a tsunami. And I kept being hit with this big cast iron frying pan. Every time I tried to get up, there was another disaster. And these weren't like little things. These were huge things and a lot of stuff outside of my control. I lost a half a million dollars in one day when September 11th, when the towers fell down, so did my business. And in the lawsuit, I lost a half a million because of a bad employee that got too close to a key vendor. And so I fought and fought and fought and fought. And eventually I had to figure out how to crack the code. And when I did, I was able to sell my business to Bill Gates for millions of dollars. Hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so how do you work with uh, clients who want to sell, uh, not, not sell, but skill? their business how do you uh what's your framework what's your framework so my framework is the five star success blueprint and it has as the name suggests five different steps so if you're thinking about you know bringing a business to market or scaling it so there's so so there's really three phases to a business so there's the first one where you need to grow there's the second one when you have grown and you need better systems that's when you scale and then there's the third part, that's when you are potentially exiting the business or you are merging or you are then going to that next level growth. But let's just, for the purpose of this podcast, focus on these two. So when you grow, you use the five-star success blueprint. And when you scale, you use the five-star success blueprint. And the reason it works, because these, these steps that you take, take a look at what it exactly is that you need to do. So let So I want to take you through this. In when when you have a business and it has a certain income, it produces a certain income, and now you need to scale up. You need to think about what are the different pieces that I need to do. It's like um, think about it like a dough. When you take a dough and then you take your rolling pin and you you know and you make the dough further and then you roll it and then you cut it into slices. You bake it and then you cut it into slices. So business is very much like that. We have to take everything that you do and you know, we put it all in one place, we assemble the pieces, we pull it apart, and then we cut it into slices. And the reason you need to do that 
is you need to figure out what are the different entry points for your customers. You need to have a system for that so they can self-identify where they fall. You need to have a complete transformation journey that goes all the way from A to Z so that a client understands where in the journey that they are. And then finally, you need to be able to give them specifically the one product or service or solution that they need in that particular phase. And when that phase ended, that's when you move them into the next phase. That's how we scale. And as we are figuring out what these pieces are, now you as a business owner, you get to step into the leadership position. And it's like a marionette, right? That we pull up where suddenly, you know, you see the the, the heads on top and the arms are hanging and everything is in order. So now we're building the structure that you can be in management above and then figure out what are the pieces that need to service this slice of bread and all the pieces that are underneath of it. So that's what I help people with right now to understand how does this work? How do I grow this? How do I scale it? And how do I how do I make myself obsolete so that I get freedom of time and money? Hmm. What do you see? What do you see the challenges that business have uh, when they want to when they want to scale their business? Uh, they are they are convinced that the story that they believe in is the only story that there is. There is a point in business where you have to surrender and you have to let go and you have to allow something else to come in. Your skill set can only get you from A to B. And then from B to C, you need a different skill set. And I think a lot of times business owners, because they they used to have these ideas and everybody tells them how amazing that they are, that they want to latch on to that idea. But the further down you go, the bigger the, the challenges and the bigger the skill set development is that you need to be having because what got you here is definitely not going to get you there. Otherwise, you'd already be there, but you are here. So the objective is not that you got here because you're so great. You got here because you did this part right. Now you need to think about who is this person that I need to be to get this business to the next level and then reverse engineer that. And that's where a lot of the friction always comes in because that's where business owner go and say, but I don't need to do that. What I've done is working great. I mean, I've, I've done everything right. I mean, why would I even need that? So when you get to a level where you are plateauing consistently, you need to hire somebody who can give you the shortcut to get from here to that next level and even help you figure out where to go. That's the number one problem. So if your listeners are now going, well, I've been in this income sine wave, this in- entrepreneurial income roller coaster for years now. You are not stepping into that next level because you're not identifying who you need to be to be at that next level, which is why you keep circling in the same level over and over again. See it all the time. Hmm. So if someone is making, uh, is generating like a 250000 in revenue and they want to scale that to uh to a million, mm-hmm. what would uh, what would you say to them, or how would they uh, process that? Well, the first thing I would say, congratulations. When can we start? <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, well, the first thing is we have to we have to design the plan, and we say, well, so if you want to be a million dollar business, what is the million dollars dollar business selling? Where is the money coming from? What are we What are we offering? What are we doing? And then we need to take that and reverse engineer that strategy. So I, you know, I had a client who was a digital marketer and he wanted to stand apart from all the other digital marketers. So we created the plan for him. And the plan was we are helping him to to build his system. And when we built his system, we had the different pieces of the system that he's moving his clients through. He literally was closing deals while he was in the program. Like he he excused himself, he'd walk out and he closed the deal and then he came back into the meeting. So this is how quickly it turns when you have the right language where your stuff is so clearly defined. That's how you can scale it up. So to answer your question, what would I do? I'd first find out where they want to go. 
design the strategy and then build the systems and bring the bring the people in and help them to to walk that step step by step so they have a plan on how to get there so you were talking uh about digital marketing so the the online space whether it's uh you're doing e-commerce or you're doing content marketing uh how do you uh, do you touch that a lot and what's the strategy for uh for that because there's different avenues that you could take like especially when it comes to digital marketing you have seo and all that so uh um, how does that work i i do not do the seo we have people that we recommend i do not do the digital marketing you have to have a digital marketing company that does nothing other than that we don't do ppc we're not in the digital marketing space but we certainly need to look at and say every business needs leads so if you need leads where are the leads going to come from you get leads through speaking you get leads through podcasting you get leads through uh writing a book a book tour you get you can get leads through ads you can get leads through a number of different ways you got to have to figure out where your leads are going to come from Mm. And that's 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 part of the strategy. I help them figure it out. And digital marketing, oftentimes, is one of one of those one of those strategies. Okay. Uh, for brick and mortars, sometimes it can be limited uh, to grow their business. What would you have to say about that? It really depends on the business. I find that in the blue collar world. Where we, you know, talking whatever plumbing, electrical, construction, there, there is a lot that can be done if you only had the right systems and you'd be organized enough so that there is, you know, that the systems are are, are running smoothly. And how do you get new people? And most people in brick and mortar business are relying on Google reviews or Yelp reviews. And they are not active, actively out there, or not building an online component. So again, you know, we would have to take a look at what are the numbers, what are the growth opportunities. I work with a digital marketer who specifically helps brick and mortar businesses to develop their online presence, so that they can add an online e-commerce component to their to their brick and mortar store, so they can double and triple numbers. So it de- always depends on what is it that you want. What's the lifestyle that you want? What's the income you want to make? What are you willing to to put in for that, and then make the plan? In uh, in a bad in a bad economy, when the economy is bad or there's a recession or we have the inflation situation right now, uh, how is it? Because uh, it could be really challenging to uh, to scale the business in in those times. Uh, how could someone? Uh, uh, take that challenge and scale their business? I'm going to answer that with a very simple question. If if all your competitors are stopping the marketing right now because they're afraid, what do you think you should be doing? Say that again. If, there's, if they stop their marketing? If, if all of your competitors would st- are stopping their marketing because they're afraid, they're preserving their cash, okay, okay. they're not spending any money. If all of your competitors are not marketing or advertising right now, what do you think you should do? Well, of course, I would. Mar- <laughs> I would the opposite. <laughs> of course. So, so that's it. That's where the opportunity is. When everybody else is protecting... And if you think about protection, right? Protection, what's the hand gesture for protection? The hand gesture for protection is crossing and it's a downward motion, right? Like if you were to protect a child, it's it's always a down motion. That's not growth. Growth is an upward motion. So you make a conscious decision when you stop to not grow. And then the opposite of this is going to happen because then you're trying to protect. Protection is not growing. You make a decision, are you for more or for less? But you can't have both. You cannot say, I'm going to go for less now, so I have more later. That just doesn't work that way. Like you can't, I give you a very simple, maybe somewhat stupid example, but let's say you're in a relationship and you're not sure on whether or not this is the person for you. So 
are you going to do less with this person now because you can always do more later? The person may be moved, they may be gone. They may have moved on to somebody who treats them properly because if they're not getting what they want from you in the relationship, you know, you're out. There is no getting back. So you have to be very clear on where do you put your energy in your business? And if I want something, then I need to put my energy to creating and building and growing that. But if I'm standing here and I'm saying like, I don't know, you know, everybody says it's bad. So I'm going to believe that what everybody else says is bad. I went in the Apple store. Guess what? People are buying Apple watches and computers and phones like there's no tomorrow. I, I, I'm not seeing no recession at the Apple store. I go to Target. People are buying stuff. I went to Costco. The lines are no shorter at Costco than they ever were. So if there are people out there buying stuff, then there must be people who can buy your stuff. So what do you need to do to, to do that? So that's a choice. Believing in the believing in that there is no opportunity, that's your choice. It's not my choice. You have a, you have a book uh, that you wrote. Can you talk to us about uh, the book? Yes. The book is called Happy Woman, Happy World. And this is a book that helps specifically women to get from overwhelmed to awesome. I realized that men have a code of conduct, that men's code, and I wanted to give women their own code, the women's code. And that's why I wrote the book, helping women to understand how to be a parent, how to be a working mom, how to not feel guilty, how to feel happy and you know you can get the book at happywomanhappyworld.com that's when you get all the links on where you can buy the book hmm. and what are some stuff that you're working right now at the moment uh right now we are working on an authority platform building um program where we help podcast hosts to take their podcast and then they give us a podcast and then we turn it into about 120 touch points a month based on the authority building ideas that I've had, because I find that a lot of people that are in the podcasting space do their podcast, but they're not promoting it as consistently and not in front of the right audience as much as they should. So we're building that service as we speak. Hmm. Uh, last words and uh, everything we've talked about, about scaling your business to the next level. I The only thing I would say is that make sure that you don't take failure personal. Failure is not personal. Failure is just somebody with a stop sign telling you not to go that way. So, you know, if you don't update your GPS and you're stuck in a cul-de-sac because you forgot to update, you're not going to get out of the car. You're not going to throw yourself on the ground. You're not going to go, I'm never going to drive again. I'm the worst driver in the world. Driving is useless. I'm going to sell my car, you know. You're not going to do any of it. You're just going to go, I should have updated my GPS. And then you turn around and you find another way because you very well know your destination is still there. So you need to look at failure like that. It's just a cul-de-sac. Turn around, find another way. Mm. Uh, where can people find you on social media or the internet? You can find me at uh, all everywhere under Beata Schlett or The Growth Architect. If you liked what you heard, I invite you to go to check out the growth blocker quiz when you are stuck and you want to be unstuck and you want to figure out what is it that you're missing go to growth blocker quiz find out what your number one business growth blocker is and then we'll send you a report and tell you what you can do about it and you you also uh, have uh, your own podcast the growth architect can you tell us a little bit about the the podcast Yes. So my podcast is the Business Growth Architect Show, and that is about anything around business, tons of strategies and ideas and tactics that are implementable, things that you can do right now, a lot of mindset stuff on how can you get started today to do something that moves the needle. All right. Uh, thanks, Beate, for uh, being here on the show. It was nice meeting you and talking to you. So uh, I was watching some of your videos uh, a couple of days ago. So uh, I really like uh, what you're doing, your insights and uh, all your knowledge and experience. So it was very nice uh, talking to you. Uh, thank you everybody for taking the time to listen to the podcast. Welcome to a better lifestyle. 
My name is Richard Lesperance, and I go by the name of My Man Richard. Wherever you're listening to the podcast, whether it's on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or other platforms, make sure to uh, follow and subscribe. And if you're watching on uh, YouTube or other uh, uh, video platforms, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment. Uh, and uh, it will be very appreciated. So on that note, uh, thank you, Biate, for being here and uh, your knowledge and uh, experience and all your insights. And uh, thank you, everybody, and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye.